For most of space history, rockets were single-use machines. They launched once, burned millions of dollars, and ended up destroyed in the ocean. Then SpaceX changed that with the Falcon 9. It became the first rocket that could go to space, land safely, and fly again. What used to be impossible became routine. But now SpaceX is taking things much further with Starship. When people talk about SpaceX's Starship, most focus on one thing, its size. And yes, Starship is the largest rocket ever built, standing about 123 meters tall when stacked on its super heavy booster. But what truly makes it special isn't just the height or power, it's the fact that it's designed to be fully reusable. Every part, from the booster to the upper stage, is meant to fly, land, and fly again. That's something no other rocket in history has ever done. It's like building the world's biggest airplane and expecting it to land safely after every flight, ready to take off again with minimal maintenance. Making something that massive reusable is an engineering nightmare, yet SpaceX is determined to pull it off. Recently, the FAA surprised many by confirming that SpaceX plans to recover both parts of the Starship system, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage, using Mechazilla, the giant launch tower with robotic chopstick arms. SpaceX already uses Mechazilla at its Starbase facility in Texas to catch the Super Heavy Booster. The process looks like science fiction. As the 70-meter booster returns to Earth, the two enormous steel arms extend from the tower waiting for it to descend. Using precise GPS, radar, and onboard guidance, the booster slows down with its Raptor engines and aligns itself perfectly between the arms. Then, at the exact right moment, Mechazilla clamps onto the grid fins and catches the booster in midair, placing it directly back onto the launch mount. This system eliminates the need for landing legs and makes the turnaround process far faster. However, catching the upper stage is far more complicated. For one, the upper stage travels much faster and much farther than the booster. While the booster only goes about 100 kilometers up before turning around, Starship orbits the Earth at nearly 28,000 kilometers per hour. That means it has to survive the extreme conditions of space, then re-enter the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. During re-entry, Starship experiences enormous aerodynamic stress and temperatures over 1,500 degrees Celsius. The friction with the atmosphere generates plasma that wraps around the vehicle, which can slip through even the smallest gaps in its heat shield tiles. By the time it returns, it's already been through violent heating, shaking, and pressure. Once it re-enters, Starship performs a belly flop maneuver, flipping horizontally to slow down using aerodynamic drag. Just before landing, it reignites its Raptor engines and swings back to a vertical position. For the Mechazilla arms to catch it, everything has to line up perfectly. The ship's angle, velocity, wind conditions, and engine thrust. Even the slightest error in timing could destroy both the ship and the tower. Despite this, SpaceX still plans to attempt it. Musk and his engineers believe that mastering this technique will make Starship as reusable as an aircraft. The potential savings are enormous. A single Starship system, the upper stage plus the super heavy booster, could cost up to $200 million to build from scratch. But if both stages can be recovered, inspected, and relaunched, the cost per flight could drop to around $10 million. Most of that would cover fuel, maintenance, and minor part replacements. That's a 95% reduction in launch cost. To prepare for this, SpaceX has almost finished constructing a second Mechazilla tower and launch pad at Starbase. The company's long-term goal seems to be to use one tower for booster operations and the other for Starship recovery. Having two towers would speed up the entire launch cycle, one rocket launching while another is being prepared for flight or recovery. It's important to understand that SpaceX, and especially Musk, has always been extremely optimistic about Starship's timeline. From the beginning, Musk set goals that sounded almost impossible, and often turned out to be years ahead of reality. When SpaceX first unveiled the Starship concept, originally called the Big Falcon rocket, Musk claimed the rocket could reach orbit as early as 2020. 
At that time, SpaceX hadn't even completed a full prototype. The company was still testing small-scale vehicles like Starhopper, which only flew a few hundred meters into the air in 2019. In 2017, Musk announced that the first Starship missions could begin by 2022, delivering cargo to Mars. A year later, he adjusted that plan and said Starship would likely reach orbit by 2020, with crewed flights to the Moon and Mars following shortly after. He even promised that a private lunar mission would take place by 2023. That mission, called Dear Moon, was meant to send a crew of artists around the Moon in Starship. As of 2025, that flight still hasn't happened, and the mission is officially canceled due to continuous delays. Musk also said multiple times that Starship would be ready for Mars cargo missions by 2024 and crewed Mars missions by 2026, but reality proved very different. Instead of orbit, the early Starship prototypes spent years performing short suborbital tests between 2020 and 2021. The first full-stack flight, with both Starship and its Super Heavy booster, didn't happen until April 2023, three years later than promised. Even the development speed has been slower than expected. Musk often compared Starship's progress to Falcon 9's. But building something this large and complex introduced new problems that couldn't be solved overnight. SpaceX also promised that Starship would play a major role in NASA's Artemis program. When NASA selected SpaceX in 2021 to develop a lunar lander version of Starship, the plan called for a crewed moon landing by 2025. But because Starship has yet to complete a fully successful orbital flight and recovery, that goal is now delayed. We're not saying SpaceX is failing at what they're trying to do. Far from it. But developing the largest rocket ever built is proving to be harder and slower than even they expected. And honestly, no one can blame them for that. When you look at other rocket companies, most are playing it safe. They're developing smaller, more manageable rockets instead of trying to leap straight to the largest and most complex system in history. Companies like Blue Origin are using designs that already exist. Take their new Glenn as an example. It's a large rocket, nearly the size of the Falcon Heavy. But it's nowhere near as massive or ambitious as Starship. New Glenn's first stage is reusable, much like Falcon 9, and even looks similar. It uses landing legs, grid fins, and performs a vertical propulsive landing on a drone ship in the ocean. This design isn't experimental anymore. SpaceX has already proven it works more than 200 times. Blue Origin is essentially taking that existing model and scaling it up for heavier payloads. That means they don't have to figure out every detail on their own. They can study what's worked for SpaceX and what hasn't, using that data to avoid the same mistakes and reduce costs. Even the engines on New Glenn is already being used by another company, United Launch Alliance, on their Vulcan rocket. That gives Blue Origin a major advantage in testing and reliability. In other words, their approach is safer, more predictable, and less risky financially. SpaceX, on the other hand, is building something that's completely new from top to bottom. New engines, new materials, new landing system, new manufacturing techniques, even new launch infrastructure. They're trying to reinvent the entire process of launching and recovering rockets in one go. So while other companies are refining what already works, SpaceX is rewriting the rulebook. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.